let us pray. Father, we come before your most holy presence right now, Father, and we're thankful for another time to uh, preach your word, God, and we pray that you will move by your spirit and by your power and your people and in me and through me, oh God, and have your way, God, and allow your word to just go forth. Um, I don't want to be in your way, God. I just want you to do what you do best, and that is um, bring forth your word. And so um, have your matchless way, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The scripture was read earlier, Acts chapter 27, um, and verses 9 through 12, and then Acts 27, verses 20 through 26. And I think I'm going to go on and I'm going to read that again, um, you know, just because I want to get it in my spirit again. So it says, Now, when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, <laughs> I perceive that this voyage will be hurt with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to Phoenix and there to winter, which is an haven to Crete, of Crete and lieth toward the southwest and northwest. Verse 20. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God have given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. Howbeit, we must be cast upon a certain island. Amen. The title of this message is... Uh, Fear not, believe God. Fear not, believe God. We're going to look at uh, three things from this, this, these passages of scriptures, and we're going to say, uh, number one, fear, fear not. Number two, God has purposed. And number three, believe God. Fear not, God has purposed. Believe God. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to try to catch you up with where we are right now um, in, this, in this passage of Scripture. Paul had been arrested for preaching the gospel and um, was on his way to Rome to appear before Caesar. And by now he had already completed three missionary journeys and ended up being in prison because of accusations by the Jews in Jerusalem. And then taken to Caesarea for um, Festus, the governor, to hear his case. And Festus couldn't find anything wrong that Paul had done. So he called in King Agrippa and Bernice, who in turn listens to Paul's case to find out if Paul had done anything wrong. This is the case. Listen to the case. Paul says, let me 
See, where's the case in verse 26? Yeah, chapter 26. Let's let's listen to, to Paul's case. Chapter 26, I'm going to start from verse 12. And Paul says, he's talking to um, Agrippa, King Agrippa. And he says, um, whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking to me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the bricks, the pricks. And I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee. For this purpose, I might say for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and those things in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. He said, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all of the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and, and do works meet for repentance. But for this, these causes, the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continued unto this day witnessing both small to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. For these causes, this is why they want to kill me. And so Paul was trying to let them know that, listen, I know that, I was the kind of person who, uh, I, I persecuted Christians at one time. He said, I was convinced that, that, that I should do all that was possible to oppose the name of Jesus. He said, you know, I had the authority of the chief priest to go and, and, and throw them in the prison. And, you know, I watched them die. I, I stood by and watched Christians, Christians die because... I was convinced that I was doing the right thing, you know. But he said, but one day something happened to me. He said, I saw this light, this light that shined upon me. And when this light shined on me, he said, it's something that happened. And it, and it just changed my life from, from that day forward. I, 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 think, I believe I heard from the Lord. And ever since, I've been, I've been preaching and, and teaching what God has told me to preach and teach. And I trust and I believe his word that God has told me to go forth and preach his word. And so he says, for these causes, though. He said, I can't believe for, for the life of me that, that they have a problem with this. I don't understand why they have a problem with me telling them, telling people that Jesus, he died and he rose again from the dead. I don't have, I don't understand what the problem is here. The Jews had tried to convince Festus to hold the trial in Jerusalem so they could kill Paul. But since Paul was a Roman citizen, he had the right to appeal to Caesar in Rome. 
And so Paul was able to get away from the Jews because he was able to, 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 to tell, tell them that, listen, I'm a Roman citizen. I was born in Rome. I'm, I may be a Jew, but I was born in Rome, and I got a right to go see Caesar in Rome. I got a right. And so he called on his rights. He was like, listen, y'all, y'all can't, don't, don't send me to the Jews. The Festus asked him, he said, well, would you rather go to the Jews and, and, and to Jerusalem and allow the Jews to, you know, to hear your case? He said, no, I don't want them. I, I, I didn't do anything wrong to them. I'm not going to them. So they could kill me? No. He said, send, I'm a Roman citizen. Send me to, to Caesar. I, I want, I want to go to Rome. So Festus and Agrippa, we're going to free Paul. They went back and they said, "Well, listen. We, what we're going to do? We're going. We're going. We're going to ch- ch- listen to. Listen. We already listened to his his case, and we we didn't find anything wrong. He didn't. What is he doing wrong? And why would the Jews want to kill him? What is what is this all about? No. You know what? Let's go and and, and free Paul. But then they thought about it. They said, "Well, we can't free him because he didn't already appeal to, to to Caesar that he wants to go to Rome. Now we got to let him go to Rome and allow Caesar." Uh, 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 you know, to listen to his case. Well. And so, you know, Festus and Agrippa, since they were going to free Paul, they couldn't free him because of his request. Paul, as a prisoner on a ship, was heading in the direction of Rome. And so this is, this is where we are in the scripture. So now he's a prisoner on a ship headed to Rome, okay? Because he has to go before Caesar. And we see that things were good for a minute. Um, and, you know, that's the way it is sometimes, you know. You make, you make a bad decision, a wrong decision, and things look like they're going to be good. They, they look like they're going to be all right for a minute. But then they changed ships, and they went, got on another ship, and the ship that was going to Italy, and once they got on that ship, uh, some things started to change. And Paul thought about it because, see, Paul knows, he know about, you know, fishing and being out on the sea and all that kind of stuff. And he thought about the thing. And he says, you know, wait a minute, guys, wait. He said, I, I, I perceive that this voyage will, will be with hurt and, and much damage. It, you know, and not only to the ship and the cargo, but also of our lives. He said, you know, listen. I think we're about to die. He's like, this is this is not a good idea. We, I don't think that we should we should go this way. I don't think that we should go right now. Let's wait and let's give it time, you know, for the weather to, to because at certain times of the year the weather would be really stormy and nobody goes out on the sea yeah. like that. But but they were worried about the fact that the place where they were going to have to stay for their winter season wasn't going to be the right, you know, the proper place to stay. It was, it wasn't, it wasn't the best place to be, you know. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't like, you know, the five-star hotels, you know what I'm saying? This, this was like the barn where where Jesus was, baby Jesus was born. Like, who wants to stay here for the whole winter season? And so they're thinking about, uh, uh, how they were going to feel and, you know, thinking about, uh, uh, you know, where they were going to be. And sometimes we are, we are like that. You know, we feel, we feel like, um, you know, I, I, I'd rather be in a, in a different place. I don't care what I have to go through. I don't want to be here because this is, this doesn't feel good. This doesn't feel right. And how many of us know that everything ain't going to feel right? It, sometimes you have to make a wise decision to deal with what you're going through. Sometimes you just got to deal with it. You got to deal with the, the the dust around your feet. You got to deal with maybe sometimes you be in a place and you're living in somewhere where where there may be some some little crit, 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 critters running around and you feeling like I don't want to be here. And no, 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 you don't want to be here. You don't have to be there. But if 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 God is telling you that this is the place where He needs for you to be for this moment in time, then you better you better hang in there and just trust that God knows. What he's doing in your life right now. Because right now it may not feel good. It may not look good. It may, it may not be the place where you want to be. How many of us have found ourselves in that kind of position in our lives? This ain't the place where I want to be right now. I don't, I don't want to be here. I don't feel like this is, this is where God would have me be. But I'm here to let you know that God knows what he's doing in your life. And 
He knows what he what what he needs for for where he needs for you to be. And sometimes you got to be just right where God has you. And it ain't always going to be beautiful. It's not going to always be like you think it's supposed to be. No, no, no. You just have to suck it up. Trust it, trust God that He knows what He's doing. And deal with it because see what 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 they had what they did they they pretty much did like uh like we would do um if if it's, we're in a place where we don't want to be um and God says okay this is it this is where you want this is where you need to be right now but you know things are going to get better later in life and you you know you think but I ain't got time to wait so you go out and you do something foolish. To try to get to where God wants you to be on your own. And you, you're doing all this foolish stuff. You, you know, all right, I'm going to go down to the casino and I'm going I'm to win me a whole bunch of money. And, and I get to the casino and you get to the casino and you call yourself going to win you a whole bunch of money to get yourself out of this trouble, right? And you, when you get to, the, get, get to this casino, you take the little bit of money that you had. And then you lose all the little bit of money that you had. (laughs) And then you have to go borrow some more and you go back and lose that. I'm just trying to draw a picture for you. Because that's the way we do. We try to get ourselves out of situations, right? And 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 that's not good. It's not good. You, you if, if if you're in a place where you you're pretty much between a rock and a hard place and you don't know what to do, guess what? Call on Jesus. Don't, don't, don't call on somebody who's going to give you some wrong advice and, and tell you, oh, just go ahead, girl, and just do this. Or, or go ahead, man, and, 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 and try this or try that. No, don't, don't call. Call on Jesus because he's going to give you the right advice. He's going to give you the right advice. And you're not going to always like his advice. You're not going to always like it. He might tell you, stay where you are, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. He might just tell you that, and you'd be like, stand still, yeah, but God, you don't know how it is in here. i got to stay here. You don't know what these people are doing to me, God. Oh, you're, you're going to say, stand still. God says, just stand still and see the salvation, because I know what I'm doing in your life. But they didn't listen. They wouldn't listen to Paul. Paul tried to tell him. He tried to let him know, listen, I, 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 I perceive that this is. Now he's saying, I, when you hear somebody say, I perceive, <laughs> a prophet, he done said, he done said, I perceive that. Come on. It's not a good idea for us to take this trip right now. I perceive. <laughs> And, and here they are. They they listening to everybody else. Everybody else telling them, "Oh, you know, this is the captain of the ship." He says, "Oh, don't worry about it. We're gonna go on, and let's go and sail anyway, because we'll be fine out here. This is great. We're, we're, we'll be fine. And it's gonna, the weather's not gonna be as perfect as we think it's gonna be. But guess what? We'll be okay." And then and they listen to the to the to the uh, the captain of the ship because he's supposed to know what he's talking about. But. He's supposed to know what he's talking about, right? So they listen to him. They don't listen to the man of God, you know, who's, who's, who's listening to God, has his ear to God, and, and God is speaking to him and let him know. They don't listen to him. They listen to, to, the, to the, the captain of the ship. And so they got out there. They got out there on the ship. And then they find themselves in deep trouble. Started off nice, you know. I'm sure they probably said, "We made the good, we made the right decision." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We made, we made the right decision, right? This, this ain't bad, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, they, they find themselves in this deep, and deep, 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 deep trouble. They, 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 they the, the temp, tempestuous uh, a, a wind call of uh, called Eurachlodon. I, I preached about Eurachlodon. Uh, one time before, and um, you know that's this wind that that just comes and it, it just it, it it just takes over. I don't care what you try to do, the you, there's nothing that you can do with your with your with with your boat because the wind just takes over and it arose to the point that they had to just let the ship flail in the wind for a time because they, they, there was nothing that they could do. They couldn't hold on. They could. They it wasn't. They were just in a mess. And so. 
they started throwing their cargo aboard and overboard and 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 they were doing all this stuff they were doing everything that they could to try to keep the ship afloat and so in verse twenty it says, and when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared many okay so so they've they've been out there i'm gonna say uh for fourteen days now. And the wind and the waves have been kicking the boat from one end of the, <laughs> the sea to the next. And, 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 and it was a dark, dark. They couldn't see anything. And uh, they were hungry. They, didn't, they were too scared to eat. It says, and when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, they were in the darkness. And sometimes, I, you know, our, our, our storms and our lives, you know, we, can find, we find ourselves in darkness like this. And the storms in our lives, sometimes, you know, we can't find our way, can't even see our way in the storms in our lives. It says, and no small tempest lay on us. It says, it, it, was, it, was, so, it, it was such, uh, uh, so, many, so many hard and, 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 and tempestuous waves that, that came upon us. Can you imagine, if you can just place yourself on that boat at that time, uh, with, uh, and, and think about what these men was, must have been, and, and, the, and the Bible lets us know that it was like, it wasn't a few of them, it was like 275, 76 of them out there on that water together. And uh, they, they, were, they were afraid, amen. They, they were afraid, and the wind and the waves was, was taking them over, and they were so scared that it says, uh, all hope, that we should be saved was then taken away. Anybody ever felt like you were going to die? They said all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. They thought they would die. They hadn't eaten in 14 days. It was dark and it was tossed to and fro. They hadn't eaten in 14 days. They were scared. They were in the dark. They were in the dark. But God. Somebody better know. But God. Verse 21 in chapter 27 it says, But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me. <laughs> he had to get it out, you know. Sometimes we just can't keep, you can't just, sometimes, you know, you just got to say it. <laughs> you be trying not to say it, but you, you just got to go ahead and say it. Yeah. You should, you should have listened to me. When I told you, I tried to tell you, but you, see, <laughs> I told you. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm sure God would want us not to do that. You know, we don't have to do that because God already, he's already, he's already let them see that they made the wrong decision. They already know they made the wrong decision. But it's just so hard to keep it, keep your mouth shut. You know, like you should have just said, what, what, what I tell you? You know, sometimes you tell your kids, don't do this, don't do that. And then they do it and they get like, you know, don't, don't touch that fire. You touch the fire and they hit the, put their hand on the fire and you be like, see what I'm saying? Well, I'll tell you. Cause you are mad because now they're hurt. You're mad. Then you go and fix them up, you know. Told you not to do it all while you're fixing them up. You don't listen. <laughs> so, sometimes you just can't hold it in. And so Paul said, you should have, y'all should have hearkened unto me. He said, and, and not have loosed from crate. And to have gained this, this, this harm and loss. Now look at us. Look at us. Now we done, we got all, we done lost everything. We, we look at us. And he says, and now I exhort you to be of good cheer. I know they probably was like, well, well, we about to listen to Paul now. What, what are you about to say? <laughs> All 275 of them, they were like, they probably, all their ears probably went, whoop, be a good chair. How are we going to be, a, what are you about to say? What you about to say, Paul? He says, 
For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. And you're like, what? Paul saying we ain't going to die. Is he hearing from his God? Because see, all these these people, they 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 worship all kinds of other gods. They, you know, there was a time when Paul had to go up in there and say and 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 let them know who this unknown God is that they worship. Because because Paul he he wanted to make it clear that I, I got to let y'all know who this unknown God is that y'all got hanging up here. You know, y'all worshiping all these other gods and then the unknown God. Because they didn't really know who he was. And I guess they probably said, he must be talking to that unknown God. <laughs> he, he, the unknown God must be talking to him. Paul said, ain't nobody's life going to be lost. He said, but of the ship. He let him know that, 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 that you ain't going to lose your life, but you're going to lose the ship. Okay. Now, now we all going to lose the ship. Now, that don't sound too good to me. Now, you all, you're out on the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> and and then it was some of them there who couldn't swim, you know what I'm saying? Like and I know they probably was like, What? Wait a minute now. You said be of good cheer now. I felt good about that, but now you talking about <laughs> you talking about them. Ain't nobody gonna die but we're gonna lose the ship. <laughs> it's so Paul said. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. He says, fear not. He said, fear not, Paul. It's something about hearing those words from God. When fear has tried to grip the very life of you, when, it, when fear has tried to take over everything that you know, when it's, it's something about hearing those words from God that, 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 that the angel stood by him in the storm. Let me say, somebody needs to understand that God will stand by you in the midst of your storm. He'll stand by you. He sent an angel to stand by him in the midst of the storm. And he came to him and told him, he said, fear not, Paul. In Isaiah 41, 10 and 13, he says, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I'm trying to tell you, God will stand by you in your storm. If you're in a storm today, I'm here to let you know that God has his angel standing by you in the storm. He never leaves you and never will forsake you. He's going to be there in the storm, and he's going to be there when the storm is over. God is with you. And God wants to let us know here that, that, that he, when he came to Paul, Paul and, and, and all of those men were in the midst of a time in their life when they thought life was over. They thought things would never look up again. And some of us are in that place right now. We're thinking, oh God, no, I don't, I don't see, I can't foresee that anything good is going to come out of my life right now. And what I'm going through, I can't find my way, God. I can't see. And I'm here to let you know that God is saying, I'm with you. I'm right here with you. Paul said, the angel stood by him. He stood by him and in and, and, and the night. Oh, my God. And see, the night time is, is, is when is the worst time, isn't that right? That when you're going through something in life, the night time is the worst time. And when you can't see, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, glory to God, hallelujah, hallelujah. What's the Lord saying? Glory to God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Y'all pray, just pray, y'all. Pray for a minute, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We bless your name. We bless your name. Oh, what a mighty God you are. We worship you, God. We glorify your name. And we thank you, Lord God, that your word is going forth. Ashambarayan, Doroshikiyala, Malayan. 
And the peace of God, hallelujah, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the church said, Amen. And so we're we're, we're talking about uh, God being with us. Amen. And so what, what 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 is God doing? God God is letting us know that even in the midst of our storm in our lives, we got to understand that God will never leave us nor will he forsake us. And somebody may be in a storm in their lives right now. And he's letting us know that that he sent an angel to stand right by you. He sent an angel to stand with you. Amen. And so Paul goes on, he says he says um, it, he says in verse 24, saying, God said, fear not, Paul. And he says, thou must be bought before season. Now, now stop right there. God is letting us know that he has purpose for our lives. You can't go now, he said, because you must be bought before season. What does that have to do with all this storm and, and all this stuff? What does that have? He said, he says, because, because my word went out. Uh, look at Acts chapter 23. Go to Acts chapter 23 and look at verse 11. Acts 23 and 11. It says. Come on, come on. It says, and the night following the Lord stood by him. The Lord stood by him and said, be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. Somebody better hear me. When God's word goes out, his word is going to accomplish that which he sent it out to do. Hallelujah. And so we got to understand that God's word is true. That when he put his, his, he had put his word out. And he let Paul know here, Paul, you know what, fear not, Paul. <laughs> because I, I need to let you know, thou must be bought before Caesar. Caesar is in Rome. And so he's saying, you're going to be bought before Caesar because my word went out. And since my word went out, I had purpose for your life. He said, he said, my purpose was that you make it to Rome to preach the gospel. That's, that was my purpose. And, and so he said, listen, you know, in, in Jeremiah 1 and 5, he says, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. And before you came forth out of the womb, I, I sanctified you and ordained you. I, I already knew what I was going to do in your life. I purpose what I was going to do in your life. Jeremiah 29 11 says, I know the thought I think towards you. Say, if the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you, and ex- I have an expected end for you. I, I, I know the purpose that I have in, in for your life. And he says, I, I understand what I want to do. He said, and my word went forth. Look at, look at Acts chapter 26. Look at verse 16. He said, in verse 16, he said, but rise and stand upon thy feet, told Paul. He said, for I have appeared unto you for this purpose. He said, I appeared to you for this purpose. That you, will, I want to make, make you a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in which I will appear unto thee. And so God has purpose. He has purpose for your life. And I'm, I'm here to let you know that his word is, is, it was out there and it wasn't coming back to him void. He said it will accomplish what I, I, I sent it to do. And it's going to prosper in the thing that I sent it. I need you to understand that God's word will do what he said it will do. And then it says, that, uh, Gil, said, Gil says, he said, it had been declared and therefore cannot be lost in the storm. <laughs> Glory wow. to God. All right. Amen. His word had been declared and it could not be lost in the storm. I'm here to tell you, I don't care what the storm you're going through. God's word, whatever he, he, he purposed in your life or your life, whatever he purposed, can't no storm. I don't care what the storm that may come in your life. I don't care what you go through. 
over what matter it is in your life. I don't care what it looks like to somebody today. God said, I have purpose for your life. It may look like you're walking around and you don't know yourself. Oh, glory to God. But God said, I've got purpose for that life. That life has purpose. Glory to his name. He says, I, I know the plan that I have for you. I, I know the plans are of good and not of evil. I, I know what I want to do in your life. He said, I formed you in the womb, and I knew you even before I formed you in the womb. I know what I called you to be. So whatever your storm is, the storm can't change it. The storm can't be big enough to change it. It can't be big enough to stop what God has declared. Somebody better hear what I'm saying here. Somebody better understand what, what God is doing here. He said that storm, he said that, that, that storm, they thought they were going to die. They were in a place where they could not, they could not do anything. And listen, sometimes we get there. We're in that place where we, we have no more control. We're in that place where the enemy has taken over. Totally taken over. But God, he said, for this purpose. It says, this is the will of God and decree of God, which cannot be frustrated. It must be. Somebody say, say that to yourself. It must be. <laughs> it, it must be. I know God spoke some things in my life. And he didn't, he, he didn't say that I'm going to stay in the storm forever. Well, come on. And, and he didn't say that I'm go, I was going to be, you know, in, in this situation in my life forever. He got a plan for my life. Well. Hey, he got a plan and, and it must be. And I'm trusting you, God, that, that I know and I believe, I trust you, God, that, that it must be the, what you're calling for me to be. The Bible says all things work together for good Amen. to them that love the Lord and who are called according to what? His purpose. His purpose. See, God got purpose. And ain't no storm big enough to stop it. <laughs> oh, how I love him. Ain't no storm great enough in my life to stop it. And so I, I, I believe that for myself. But then when I leave it from, my, from, from myself, I got to look around at my brothers and my sisters. I got to believe it for you. See, Paul told them what the Lord told him. He said, I got to let y'all know. Ain't nobody dying up in here. <laughs> oh, he said, because see, God told me, he said in verse 20, chapter 27, he said, the Lord God stood by me that last night in that deep storm, in that crazy storm, and, that, and he stood by me, and, and he sent his angel and stood by me, and he said, Paul, fear not. Because cause, cause really, before we came and, and, and got in this mess, I tried to let y'all know that we, we just might die in this mess. And God came to let me know, Paul, you ain't dying. You can't die. He said, you can't die right now because there's purpose. <laughs> oh! He said, there's purpose for your life, Paul. He said, you can't die right now. Ain't no dying going on. Let me just make this clear to you. He said, you must be brought before Caesar. I love it. I love it. He said, you got to be brought before Caesar because my word is out there. <laughs> my word is out there, Paul. I put my word out there. That, 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 that can't come back to me, boy. This has to happen. <laughs> oh! Somebody say, it must be. Oh, my God. It must be. It's got to happen. And so I don't care what storm you're going through, what you're going through, that, who cares? Who cares what you're going through? Get through it because you're going to be all right. God is saying today you're going to be all right because he got purpose for your life. 
See, you you ain't just you where you are right now. You don't understand it. You don't you you, you because sometimes we got to go through some things to get through. We got to go through some things that you know God needs for us to learn. See, we got we got to understand some things. If you don't learn some things about who God is. You gotta learn some things about him. Oh my God. You gotta learn some things about him. So come on, let's move on. Cause man, I tell you, the word, word is good, I tell you. The word is good. He said, but then, then he said, I like this. He says, um, there, there's not gonna be anyone lost. Any, any man's, um, life gonna be lost among us. He said, but the ship. Lord have mercy. Somebody say, but the ship. But the ship. I'm here to let you know that you may lose some things. And well, some people, you may lose some friends along the way. Oh, my God. But your purpose. See, we, we, you know, we, we worry about our things. We worry about all the stuff around us. We worry about, and, 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 and God said, you want to lose that ship. That, that ship. <laughs> See, because what, what, what the thing is, the ship is, is what holds you up, right? <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's to protect you from the sea. And um, it carries you from, from one place to the next. Uh, you know, uh, but but see, how about our God? He's he's something he's something like you know because what what he will do he he will sometimes remove our props from us. See, yes, we we have props, we have things that will hold us up. Oh man, we so used to having so and so in our lives. We so used to having this. We so used to having that, and and then here come God busting it up. He just busts it up. What? And he said, you're going to be able to live without that. You're going to live without that. Oh, yeah, you're going to live without that because cause I, need, I need for you to be able to see what, what I'm doing in your life. See? And so, so he, said, he, says, he says, you're going you're gonna to live without it. He busted up. He busted up. And, and tore up the ship. He said, you ain't going to, don't worry about it. He said, I'm, the ship is going, I'm, I'm going to get rid of Listen. You're going to be in the water, whether you can swim or not. You're going to be in that water. You, you're going to be in that water. Amen? Oh, my God. You know, the song writer says, Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Uh, just to rest upon his promise. Just to know, thus saith the Lord. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. How I proved him all and all, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Listen, how I trust him, just to prove him oh and all. Listen, how you want to prove God if you ain't never been through something? This person wrote this because they've been through something and they know that God is who God said that he is. And God can do what he said that he can do. And they, they came to the point where they realized, oh, how I can, tr- oh, how I love, oh, my God, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. Come on, my God. So Paul said, be of good cheer for I believe God. Somebody got to believe God. He said, I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Even as, he said, I believe God, so y'all don't worry about it. You know, you got to have at least one person in the crowd. <laughs> Somebody got to have been through something with God and trusted him and learned how to trust him. Good God Almighty. Because I'm here to tell you, if you learn how to trust God, you get to a place where you learn, you've been through some stuff with him. And you see that he's going to hold you up in the midst of your storm. You, you understand, you find out that he'll do what he said he's going to do. That he is not a man that he should lie. But he's, he's a God who, who keeps his promises. When you find out who God is and really is in your life and what he can do, I'm here to let you know it only takes one in the crowd. Thank you, God. Because then folk will see how much you trust him. Folk will see how much you really believe in him. And, and they, they will wonder, they will wonder in their minds, and they will say, well, wait, are, are they serious? Come on, come Is this on. real? Come on now. We need one person in the crowd to trust in him. Because if you've been through anything with God, 
if you ever been through anything with God, oh my God, and God brought you out. If he brought you out of anything, I don't care what comes or what goes in my life. Oh my God, I know what my God can do. And, and, and you got to be the voice in the midst of a, a dark, gloomy, frightening situation. Somebody's got to rise up in the midst of it and say, I, 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 be, I believe God in the, in the midst of our storm, what we're going through right now. I believe you, God. I believe what my God can do in the midst of the storm. Oh, yeah, we all look like we're about to die here. It all looks like it's over right now, but I'm here to let you know. Oh, my God. God said, I need one voice. That's all. It just takes one voice. One person to believe me for what I can do and, and who I am. It only takes one. And so Paul says, you know, we'll go through this. But we're gonna be all right. Well, we're gonna be all right. And, and then in, in verse 30, 33, he says, "Listen, I need y'all to understand. We're gonna be fine. We're gonna be fine." Listen to what he said. He said, "Get something to eat." Come on now. Come on. He said, "Since you haven't eaten in fourteen days." In fear that we would all die. He said, come on, sit down. Because at first when I read this, and he was talking about, uh, you know, they hadn't had anything to eat and fast and all that. I thought they was fasting and praying. No, no, no. They were too scared. They were scared. They were too scared to eat. They were scared. There was food. There was food. I thought maybe the food had, they had, they had, lost, they had no more food. So it was food there. They just didn't eat because they were too scared to eat. Fourteen days. <laughs> Eating, eating, I ain't got time to eat. <laughs> it's dark and dark and the, and the winds are, are raging and, and storm is, is raging over my head and, and knocking us back and forth and water is coming all in the boat. This is 14 days of this. They couldn't eat. But one person stood up in the crowd, heard God, and he said, listen, I believe God, okay? And so Paul said, Get yourself something to eat. You'll, well, you'll need the strength for this one. <laughs> he said, I'm about to tell you something. You're going to need the strength for this one right here. You're going to need some strength. He said, he, said, uh, uh, he, he reminded them, this, this is for your health. For, for there shall not and hair fall from the head of any of you. Oh, my God. He said, he, he, then he, says, he, he blessed the food. And and they all got encouraged. Somebody better hear me here. Come on, one person. Come on, come on. He said they all got encouraged and they did eat. They all got encouraged and they come on in the midst of a storm. See, somebody somebody needs to be able to stand up in the midst of the storm and encourage somebody's heart in the midst of the storm. That's why you got to tell it. I don't care. You know, people say, don't tell all my business. Well, listen here. Somebody needs to hear what I got to say here. Somebody needs to hear that I, that, 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 that I know that the Lord brought you out. Somebody needs to hear it. And if you ain't going to tell it, oh, my God. God said somebody, somebody got to stand up and tell it. He said, he said, he said, he said, ain't nobody going to die. And he blessed the food. And they all got encouraged. They all got encouraged. I'm telling you, you can be encouraged in the midst of your storm. Hallelujah. While you're in the storm, you can be encouraged. And they did eat, they said. And after they ate, they got ready to brace themselves for the fight of their life. They got ready to brace themselves for the fight for their life. See, what we got to understand here, so when we look at this, Paul said, I want you to get yourself something to eat because you're going to need it. You just, just for your health. Well, how many of us know that the word of God is food? Huh. It's, it's our food. That's, that's our spiritual food. I'm here to let you know. 
If you're in a storm, you better get some word of God and you better eat as much as you can. You better get yourself healthy. You better get yourself healthy because, see, God, listen here. This is what is going to build you up. It's going to, it's going to get you ready for the battle that you may not be ready for right now in your life. But, but, but God said, I'm going to carry you through this, but you're going to have to eat something. He said, get my word. I want you to build yourself up now because you want, it's this, this, and now this is it. This is, this is it. We, we getting ready to jump out here. And, and, and this is about to happen. You want to survive. But the only way that you're going to survive is if you eat something. You got to strengthen yourself, right? You got to strengthen yourself. And, and, and the more you eat, the, more, the stronger you're going to feel. And the stronger you're going to be. He said, eat my word. I want you to, to take that word in and just, you, you, listen here, this is the spiritual side of it. He said, I, I, I work in spiritual realm. And this is what I want, want all my people to know. He says, listen, if you eat my word, my word will take, it will carry you through. Eat my word because see, some things may be getting ready to happen in your life and you got to be ready for it. And so Paul said, get something to eat. I want you to get something to eat. Brace yourself for the fight of your life. So the ship was being broken with the violence of the waves. And as the ship was being torn apart, the 276 men aboard with the promise began to cast themselves into the sea. See, the see what I'm saying? Come on. With, 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 that, with the promise that they, they received from God. See, they received the promise that they weren't going to die. See, we got to hold on to the promise. Now, listen here. Some, I, I, I'm not ready to jump in no sea, in the middle of a sea. I'm not ready to do that. I mean, I can swim a little bit, but I can't swim no, in the whole sea. I can't do that. I don't want to do that. I don't even, in the dark, I don't want to, in the, in the wind and the waves, it's just a flowing and, a fl- and flailing in my life. I, I don't want to do that. But if, if God said, if I, I, you know what? That's the promise. He said, <laughs> we'll get sorry about that. He said, hold on to it. That's right. Come on. What, what's my promise? My promise is that I told you, you ain't going to die. Well, live. You got to go through this. You're going to go through it, but you ain't going to die. Man, I see some of them gripping that promise, man. Oh, what? Oh, you sure got it? Oh, oh. <laughs> right? <laughs> gripping, gripping hold to that promise. Listen here, somebody. Hold on to the promise. And the Bible says that they began to cast themselves into the sea because the ship had been broken apart. Oh, my God. That had to be a, a, a mo- the most frightening thing that anyone has ever experienced in their lives. That the ship in the middle of the sea is being broken apart. And you have to jump in that water and swim. Or if you can't swim, because it says some of them, some of them swam. And some of them came in on boards. And then some of them came in on broken pieces of the ship. See, sometimes we're going to come in on broken pieces of the ship, of the broken down ship that we were on. Sometimes we're going to come in on broken pieces. I want to say to somebody today, the storm may be raging in your life today, but fear not and believe God that, 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 that can't no storm stop what God has purposed in your life. Can't no storm stop it. Can't no storm stop it. God has purposed something great in your life. Whatever you're going through, wherever you find yourself, wherever you see yourself right now, listen, somebody better be able to stand up and encourage your heart today. And be able to say, I'm, I'm praying that the word of God is encouraging your heart today. That God is saying, fear not, believe me. Fear not, believe that I have purpose for your life. I, I, I'm taking you somewhere. And it's, that you may not be where you want to be right now, but, but guess what? You know, I'm taking you somewhere in life. Just hold on and, and hold out. Don't jump off. Don't, don't, don't think that, you know, life is, is over. Trust me. And sometimes God will take away our ship. He'll take away our ship. So we can find ourselves in the water in that place where 
we have no control at all. And nothing is holding us up but God. Sometimes he wants to get us in that place in our lives. Oh, yeah. See, somebody better hear me here. That's right. Everything is gone. Nothing is going right. So sometimes God, that's where he wants us to be. Because if we're there, if we're in that place, then we'll look to the hills from which cometh our help. Amen. And we'll know that our help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And we will begin to trust in him. We will begin to, 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 to lean on him. We're in that water. And we don't know what's happening in that water. We just got the promise. That's all we got. We got the promise. And we're going, we got, with God, this is the time that I got to trust you. Come on. Somebody jumped in the water. You trusted, you trusted the promise. Yeah. And now you got to know that just like God was with you in the storm, he's with you in that water. Even better, he's with you in that water. And so while you're in the water, begin to trust him more. Trust him and know that he's got you. I'm in the water. It's dark. The wind is raging in my life. I don't know which way is up, but you know, God, I trusted you. I can't see because it's so dark, but I trusted you, and you said, God, you said. Paul said, just like he said, I believe it, it's going to happen just like he said it's going to happen. That's what Paul said. You better believe, God, that what his word said that he's going to do, he said, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do it, and I, I, my promises are true, my promises are right, and my promises are for you. We got to trust God, and we got to believe him. Amen. We got to believe that he knows what he's doing in our lives. Amen. He knows what he's doing, and God can do the impossible. He can do the impossible. God has purpose for your life. God had purpose for Jesus. They thought they stopped Jesus. They thought they stopped his purpose for coming here. When he died on the cross, they thought it was over. They were, ah, you know, they killed Jesus. But they didn't know that he came to die, that we might live. Uh-huh. Yeah. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. He died, but on the third day, just like he said, Just like he, said. he rose again from the dead. Hallelujah. Paul said, I believe, God, that it shall be even as it was told me. Anybody believe God today? Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, God. Fear not. God's got purpose for your life. Amen. Believe God. Fear not. Believe God. Let's close out with this scripture. First John chapter 5. And I'm going to start at verse 10. Believe God. He that believeth on the Son of God have the witness in himself. He that believeth not God have made him a liar <clears throat> because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. And this is the record, that God have given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He that have the son has life. And he that have not the son of God have not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Give God glory in this house.